Alright, welcome to part 3 yeah, of uh, this chapter 13. Okay, in the last clip we were looking at this slide. Yeah? Okay, so... Uh, one moment. Alright, yeah, we, we were looking at this slide. So if an asset, and yeah, this is the reward to risk ratio based on the stock. Yeah? But if another stock, we are talking about another stock here, if it has, uh, if it has a reward to risk ratio of 8, which is higher than this, that means it is being uh, rewarded and yeah? the investors are being rewarded more than the risk yeah? that uh, is involved in that investment. Yeah? Therefore, there will be uh, more people yeah? uh, or more investors purchasing this. Yeah? This is only possible when the price of the asset is lower. Yeah? Note this. Yeah? So this is what we, we say, higher the relative reward means the asset is underpriced. If the uh, relative reward is lower, lower the relative reward, then it means that the asset is overpriced. Okay, remember the, uh, the two, yeah? the interest rate and the present value is always uh, inversely related, yeah? oppositely related, meaning this uh, reward is the interest rate yeah? and this price or value, yeah? is the present value right so higher the interest rate here higher the interest rate higher the interest rate reward means the present value will be lower yeah and lower the interest rate the present value will be higher that is what it means yeah? so we have learned this in uh, chapter 5 and chapter 6 yeah so it's an application of that yeah another thing that you need to note here is that uh, higher the relative reward or return yeah, corresponds with lower price. Yeah? This we have explained. Yeah? So it is underpriced. Yeah? So this is an explanation of why it is underpriced here. Yeah? Lower the relative reward corresponds with higher price. And therefore, it is overpriced. Yeah? Higher price means relative to value. Yeah? Relative to value. Okay, so there is such a thing as price and value yeah? and these two should be the same at equilibrium yeah? but when there is no equilibrium then you will find that the price is different from the value all right okay let's look at this uh, diagram here these are the two points here yeah? okay one is the risk free rate zero beta and the expected uh, or the return yeah the risk free rate of return is eight percent yeah we've seen that and the other point is this, yeah, the beta of stock A is 1.6, somewhere here, and the expected return yeah, is 20%, somewhere here, yeah, this point here is stock A. Yeah. We, uh, we put this, yeah, we uh, link these two with a straight line, yeah, something like this, a red line, yeah, that going through this. So at any point on this line, the risk, uh, the reward to risk ratio would be the same, right? So this is... 20 minus 8, so therefore it is 12% uh, here, divided by 1.6, yeah? Okay, therefore, the ratio is always 7.5, yeah? The gradient here, yeah, is 7.5. Okay, but if, let's say, an asset is here, the reward to risk ratio is higher, the reward is higher for a given uh, level of risk, then this asset yeah, will be underpriced or undervalued. But if, yeah, for let's say another example, for the same level of risk, yeah, the reward given is lower. Okay, let's say seven, yeah, rather than seven point five. This, this one was eight. Yeah, let's assume this is seven. Now seven is lower than seven point five. Therefore, this is overpriced. Yeah, note that. Yeah, don't be confused area above this red line yeah? not only here but also here yeah it means underpriced yeah? even though it is above the red line it is underpriced here if it is lower than the red line it is actually overpriced okay know that yeah the, the stocks here will be overpriced all right so market equilibrium yeah? in equilibrium all assets and portfolios must have the same reward to this ratio that is the uh, underlying assumption, yeah? So, and they must all be equal, the reward to risk ratio of the market, yeah? So, you have, here you have the reward to risk ratio of a 
particular asset. This is A, expect to return for stock A minus the mystery rate divided by the beta for stock A. This must be equal to the market, yeah? expected return of the market minus the mystery rate divided by the beta for the market. But the beta for the market is always 1. Yeah? Okay. So underlying this, yeah, we assume that it's a really linear relationship. This is a very important assumption, yeah, which may not hold in reality. Okay, but that's the underlying assumption here. Okay, we assume that there is a linear relationship, okay, between systematic risk, this, and the return. Yeah? So here we assume that one unit change in systematic risk will result in x. X here means a constant, yes, a same. The same unit of change in return at all levels of systematic risk. Yeah? That is what we mean by linear relationship. Okay, but this linear assumption may not hold in reality. But we assume that it holds for a short span. Yeah? So therefore, we can make use of this assumption. Yeah? And we can develop a model based on this. Okay, and this model is called the security market line. Okay, the security market line is the representation of the market equilibrium. Yeah? Okay, the slope of the SML or security market line is the reward to risk ratio that we have seen. This is the market. Okay, this is the expected return for the market minus the mystery rate divided by the beta of the market. But since the beta of the market is always 1, yeah, it is defined as 1. Yeah, beta of the market is 1. Therefore, the slope can be rewritten as this. Just this, yeah, because if you divide some, any number by 1, it will just be that number. right? So the slope is uh, Rn minus Rf. Yeah, expected return of the market minus the uh, risk free rate. And this is called the market risk free rate. Okay, market risk premium. Yeah? So there's a specific term referring to this. Okay, risk premium generally means risk premium of any stock. Yeah, the stock's return minus the risk free return. But here, because it is the market return, okay, so it is called the market risk premium. Yeah, it's called the market risk premium here. Is that okay? All right. So here we are representing the same graph, okay, but in mathematical form. Yeah. Remember when you draw a straight line, yeah, linear graph like this. Okay, we represent this as y. This is the axis y is equals to a. This is the intercept a plus b. B is the gradient. Okay, gradient here, right? B multiplied by x. X being the axis here. Yeah, so we can represent that uh, reward to risk ratio in this manner. Yeah, we can write it here. Ra is the required return, yeah, expected or required return here, okay, uh, for a particular stock A must be equal to the risk free rate, this is the risk free rate, this is the intercept here, risk free rate is here, okay, plus now the beta, yeah, or sorry, not beta, yeah, the, the gradient here will be Rn minus Rf, yeah, because that is the market risk premium. Okay, market risk premium is Rm minus Rf, and that is the gradient, yeah, because the ratio, uh, the unit, yeah, is always 1. From here to here, alright, always Rm minus <coughs> Rf. Now, x here will be the beta, yeah, because x-axis is measured by beta, yeah, so this is beta. Now, this formula is called the capital asset pricing model, or CAPM, and yeah, this is a famous model in finance, yeah. Okay, that's beta, yeah, and this is Rf, okay, this is Rf here, yeah? and this is 1, this is Rm, yeah, at this point, yeah, this is the beta of 1, therefore this would be the Rm, yeah? okay, so this is Rm, the difference here is Rm minus Rf, here would be the unit, yeah, this would be the beta, beta of 1, the distance from here to here is 1, therefore the ratio, yeah, here, the gradient is this, divided by 1, which is this, yeah, this is beta here, also, this is b here, not beta, yeah, b, okay, beta is here, yeah, this is beta here, okay, this is x, yeah, uh, x is x, alright, so this is the formula for capital asset pricing model, alright, and we look at the model here, capital asset pricing model, or CAPM, okay, defines the relationship between systematic risk and required return, yeah, 
So if we know an asset systematic risk, we can use the CABM to determine its required return. Okay. When we use the model, we say uh, based on the model, the required return is this, yeah? not expected return. Yeah? This is true whether we are talking about any asset, whether it's financial or physical, physical asset. Yeah? Physical here means uh, this physical asset will have some value. Yeah? They can give you some cash flows. Yeah? So based on the cash flows, you can determine the reward. Okay, And also you can determine the risk involved. Alright, so here we look at the based on the CAPM uh, formula, we can say these are the factors affecting expected return or the return, yeah, required return. Why do you say expected return and not required return? Because in equilibrium, the required return will be equal to the expected return. Yeah? Now, based on this formula, we can we know that the return here, this is the return for a particular stock A. This is determined by three factors. The first one is pure time value of money. Yeah? This is referring to RF here, the risk-free rate. Okay, this is measured by the risk-free rate. Why is it called the pure time value of money? Because this is the compensation investors uh, require for deferring, yeah? for postponing their consumption. Okay, because they postpone and not consume now, they invest it for uh, some time. They need to be compensated for not consuming now. Yeah? So that's called pure time value of money. Alright, and this represent this is represented by the risk free rate. Yeah? The second factor, higher the risk free rate, higher would be this required rate of return for any asset or investment. Yeah? The second factor would be the reward for bearing systematic risk. Yeah? So this is the market risk premium, Rn minus Rf. Okay? So higher this uh, Rm minus Rf means the reward for bearing systematic risk is higher. Yeah? So when this is higher, then your required return will also be higher. All right. And the last factor here would be the amount of systematic risk of the asset. Yeah? So higher the systematic risk, higher would be your required rate of return. Yeah? So that is the relationship. Yeah? That these are the three factors that determine yeah? uh, the required return of an asset or a security or an investment. All right, let's look at this example. Yeah, we try and apply the CAPM uh, model. Consider the betas for each of the assets given earlier. The risk-free rate is three point one five percent, and the market risk premium is seven point five percent. Yeah, in your slides, this may not be given accurately. Yeah, so please change that. What is the required return, not expected return, yeah, for each? All right, because the expected return was already given earlier. Yeah? So here we are uh, looking at the required return yeah? based on CAPM. Yeah? So here, these are the four securities, the C, K, O, I, N, T, C, and B, P. Yeah? The beta we have computed earlier, or this was given earlier. Yeah? This was given earlier. So based on the given beta, we can compute yeah, the required return using CAPM. Yeah? RF 3.15 plus beta here multiplied by the market risk premium. Yeah? This is RM minus RF. Okay? This is RM minus RF 7.5. Yeah? Therefore, it is 15.9% and so on. Yeah? Okay, we can do that for the other uh, stocks as well in the same manner. Okay, but what if, yeah, let's look at C only, okay, this C, yeah, look at the C. Now, this is about 15.8%, that's a required return, yeah. What if the expected return for C is 17, okay. Now, 17 is more than the required return, yeah, it is less than 16%, the required return. But the expected return for C is 17, yeah. When there is a difference between the expected return and the required return, that means there is no equilibrium. Yeah? That means the stock is not fairly priced yet. Okay, that is the meaning of this. Yeah? This, this stock C is not fairly priced yet. So because the required return is lower and the expected return is higher, okay, many would go and buy. Yeah? Because they require only this much, only about less than 16%, but uh, the reward you get, yeah, the return you get is 17, which is higher than 
everyone, the investors will try.